Welcome back to PyBytes YouTube. Today, a quick video on refactoring on the extract method refactoring. Um, so you use this technique when a function or a class method is doing too many things and you want to break it out in more units because ideally a function or a method should do one thing only. So here I got a kind of simplified example just to make the point, but we have a process user input function and it's doing three things. It's getting user inputs and validating it. It's transforming it. Um, so I'm doing some calculations here and it's uh, printing or responding to the user. Um, again, in a real world scenario, this could easily be a function that has 60 plus lines and um, it's doing many things and you want to kind of um, break that apart. And usually what you see is these kind of inline commands that can hint that a function is doing more things than it should be. I have a couple of tests already written for this to uh, validate this. So um, that's also kind of where you see this is a bit nasty that we have to use mocking to mock out the user input. Otherwise the function would just um, hang uh, waiting for a user input. Uh, but yeah, it uh, pretends a user entering 25 and a user entering invalid. Then it runs the function and then we check for the captured, the capfd readout error. Um, which is an object with dot out and dot error, and dot out is the standard output, and this is basically what should be printed to the screen. When an invalid input is given, then you get this error. Right? So I can run this, this runs fine, and yeah, when refactoring, you always wanna have some tests to, to have some validation that you're not messing anything up. Again, simplified example, just to make the point. So how does the extract method refactoring then work? Uh, let's go piece by piece. So for example, this one, I want to break out into a get user input function. Um, so it gets the user input, tries to convert it to float. Either that works for integer or floats, or if you give it a string, then it will raise a value error. Um, in that case, so we always need to return something. So uh, here we can return Celsius. And here we can return none. And then here we can check, we can call the function. Celsius equals get user input. And that's either going to be a valid float number or it's going to be none. So we have to then test if Celsius is none, we return. And then we're kind of back to what the function was originally doing. So here you already see, um, and actually, this is interactive still. Uh, so another technique you could do is um, enter the um, Celsius value optionally into the function and then only ask the user if, if that Celsius given is none. And then, you know, then the, the function does no longer... Uh, you can actually test uh, the function with a given value and you're not relying on user input. But that goes. that's probably a topic for another video. Um, then we can run the test again and see if it still works, and it does. And that's really um, what I recommend with refactoring, right? To always have some sort of test coverage so you can quickly validate that things are still working. Right, now the second one. So uh, this is going to be... convert uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, gets a Celsius. Uh, we can even type hint that as well. Uh, so it gets a Celsius float and it returns a Fahrenheit float. And here we need to then call the function. It's uh, Fahrenheit equals convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, gets a Celsius, returns a Fahrenheit. And lastly, we can um, turn this into a function as well. No, wrong. Let's first write, run a test, still works. And now we, so we, we try to do this in small increments, right? To make sure we don't mess up in between. And this is um, show results. That's fine, but I'm also needing the Celsius value. And that's then printed in F string and and here I call that function, which is nicely auto-completed by uh, Copilot. 
So yeah, we have a much leaner function, but we also have more readability now because um, we have three new names. We have get user input, we have convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, and we have show results or show result uh, singular. That makes sense. And yeah, that's now pretty lean. And all these functions can now be tested in isolation. And yeah, you don't get that uh, spaghetti code of interdependencies, right? Uh, just wondering if I can do here some typing. We have an optional, we have a float or none. And here we get a float and return a float. And here we actually don't return anything. And I think we're good. Oops, there's an error on line 17. I got a typo here. I'd rather have a typo here. That's how you actually write Celsius. Yep. And the tests are still run, right? So we went from one function that had three pieces of logic, uh, breaking out using the extract method um, or restack function, refactoring into three functions. So we got the user input into one, the conversion into another, and the showing of the result into a third function. Again, code is now more um, broken down, easier to test, it has extra names, um, and overall this is cleaner and more maintainable. Hope this is helpful. Comment below if you want to see more videos on refactoring. Um, definitely one of um, yeah the most interesting topics I think we can show here on the channel. And other than that, thanks for watching. Have a good day, and see you in the next uh, video.